So, hello everyone. Um, a lot has happened since uh, the last video that I've made. In fact, I think the last video that I made was asking people to register to vote because I thought there was going to be a general election soon. And uh, we did have a general election. And <laughs> I just really don't know what to say about it. Like, it's, it's been a couple of days, so I have ingested what has literally been going on and even though I, ha I haven't been active on youtube i've actually been active on twitter and been voicing my opinions and my just sadness about what has gone on so let's unravel what has been going on god this is so depressing but basically uh parliament agreed to hold a general election and our general election was on the 12th of december and we got the results back on the 13th of December and uh, <laughs> I mean like looking back I thought having a general election was a good idea I never want to go through a winter election ever again I really want to talk about what I think actually went wrong for the Labour Party in this general election because we lost and we lost very very badly and now we are going to have a Boris majority and we will not have the chance to get rid of him until 2024 and I think the first thing that I think went wrong in this general election campaign was that it was in the winter 2017 we actually got it right and we saw Labour's votes skyrocketed and we didn't quite win in 2017 but we did well where the Tories lost their majority because the Tories went into 2017 with like a 20 point lead I think the lead was when Theresa May called that election in 17 and then she lost her majority and then she tried to struggle on until she eventually caved in and resigned and then we had Boris Johnson come in um come in so and and yeah that was I I've never been so angry when it comes to the people's vote campaign because I think it is a shocker, isn't it? I mean, like, three years ago, the country voted to leave. And you know what? Three years on, we found out again that the country still wants to leave. So, uh, I've, I've never been so angry at a campaign than I have been with the People's Vote campaign because I do think that the right democratic thing to do was to leave the European Union. And how we leave the European Union is still up for debate because it was never a decision between even no deal or remain that was the false promise of of this entire thing and i think i think the tories were really good at basically trying to convince people that it's either remain or it's either basically the hardest brexit you can ever get where we basically cut off all our ties from europe and like this general election was all about brexit and it is and I think one of the biggest reasons why I think Labour got hammered in this election was because people were just so sick of Brexit. I mean, I heard it on the doorstep. I was literally out canvassing in Crawley every single day, a town that voted 58% to leave. And I heard it on the doorstep every single day that people were just fed up and, and people just wanted Brexit over with. And unfortunately, our Brexit policy was wrong. And I think that was our first big mistake, going into a election promising a second referendum when the entire country had had basically enough of politics i mean parliament has done a very good job of basically making the british people very disengaged with what has actually been going on because everyone who i spoke to on the doorstep when trying to canvass get people to vote for labor everyone i talked to was saying we are just fed up of brexit and we just want something else to happen you know what i understand that basically corbyn didn't want a second referendum because like when you take a look at what he was saying all throughout 2016 all, all throughout 2017 and, and you know even all throughout before conference 18 corbyn was saying mcdonald was saying that no second referendum but unfortunately, 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 we caved in a bit to the right of the party because the right of the party, people like Alistair Campbell, who was basically like the leader of the People's Vote campaign, we, we caved in and we promised a second referendum and then we found out that, well, there is no majority for a second referendum in this country. And look, we are in very, very unprecedented times in British politics because no country 
in the existence of the European Union, no country has actually tried to leave the European Union before. In fact, before 2008 or 2009, there, was e there wasn't even a process to leave the European Union until the Article 50 of the, the Lisbon Treaty was actually established. This was basically another election that was based on Brexit. And because look, when you think about it, if you're a British person who has seen the mess that this country has actually been in for the last three years and then you take a look at two different Brexit policies you have the Conservatives over here saying let's get Brexit done I do not care we will get Brexit done and then when you take a look at Labour's policy we will negotiate a deal a different deal to the Tories and then we will put it back to you for a final say but we won't tell you how we're going to basically what we're going to advise you vote on because we're going to stay neutral and then, so we're going to basically have a second referendum and then we're going to have a conference before that second referendum to decide what Labour's policy should be on that. So when you take a look at it, if you're party neutral, like if you sometimes swing vote and then you take a look at those two Brexit policies after the after the mess that the country has been in for the last three years, which one sounds more attractive? Get Brexit done or let's have a second referendum. Which one sounds more attractive to you? I mean, like, one of the biggest things that really got to me when I was watching other YouTubers talk about politics was, like, Jazza John rhyming with oranges, even though I don't agree with him on many things because he is a Lib Dem. When he said in one of his videos talking about Brexit, I can't remember which one it was, but when he said, even though I'm a hardcore Remainer, the idea of getting Brexit done so we can move on kind of sounds attractive to me at this time. That, that was one of the moments of the campaign for me because i thought look this is even appealing to people who voted remain and the conservatives were really actually really good at making this election all about brexit because that's basically what it was and when it comes to brexit we were never gonna out brexit the tories when you think about it because we because what labor have been saying all along before we had a second referendum is that we will respect the result but we will try to have close ties with europe that we want a new customs union arrangement or and we want a new trade deal with the single market where the Tories were threatening um, the country with no deal so we were never gonna out Brexit the Tories and I don't think no deal is <laughs> safe for this country so I think that so agreeing to another Brexit election in hindsight sounded like a good idea but it didn't work and neither did our Brexit policy and that didn't work either because we tried to bring the country together. We tried to bring the country together and it turns out that's actually impossible because this country has turned into you're either a lever or a remainer. So there is no middle ground when it comes to Brexit is there, which is what we found out in on the 13th of December. <laughs> now we spent the last 10 minutes basically bashing our Brexit policy. Where do we go from here? Because we have five years until another election. Because of such a strong Conservative majority and because we now have a stable government right now because they have such a big majority, where do we go from here? So we basically, we have five years to basically plan for the next election and the first step is electing our new leader for the Labour Party and if you follow me on Twitter you you already know because I've been tweeting some very funny memes about it. I believe that the next leader should be Rebecca Long-Bailey because Rebecca Long-Bailey is the person to basically keep Labour on the left and then carry on our leftist policies and you might think that is a stupid idea if you're a centrist or, f or if you're on the right of the party because you might be saying well the last election proved that a left manifesto is not electable and now I will disagree with you that a left manifesto is not electable because we saw in 2017 that we rose in popularity when a neutrality kicked in in the media and you know what had 2017 with a better brexit policy had 2017 went on for a bit longer i believe that we would have won i mean in crawley in 2017 we came within 2500 votes of beating our tory mp and then who had been an MP for a long time, since 2010, he was quite popular. So we came within 2,000 votes of beating him in 2017, well, 2,000 votes in 2017. And then in 2019, we slipped back because we lost by 8,000 votes. 
so his majority went up so yeah we didn't lose this election because we had a left manifesto because we had practically the same manifesto from 2017 with a few more better policies such as free prescriptions free broadband and some better left policy so we were actually more radical in this election but the only difference between 17 and not at 19 was our Brexit policy and that is what killed us so we didn't lose this election because of our radical manifesto we lost because our we lost because of our stupid Brexit policy which is why I believe that Rebecca Long Bailey should be the next leader of the Labour Party because so we can carry on the left manifesto get organizing for 2024 and to be honest I think that because Rebecca Long Bailey hasn't been in Parliament for as long as Corbyn, I don't think the media will have a lot to attack her on. Because like with Corbyn, like ever since he became leader, really, with Corbyn, the media have been hammering him like on anti-Semitism, on being uh, an IRA supporter, being a terrorist sympathizer. I mean, all these things that that the media were hammering i mean the media were not neutral in this election so i think definitely the media's hostility to corbyn definitely played a part because like when i was knocking on doors i was literally having people quote to me what they were reading in the media and in in the newspapers some of it was absolutely not true so this is something that needs to be addressed that like the media needs to be more neutral in an election because it has an effect. It has an effect. I mean, like, every newspaper was was slating Corbyn. I think the only major newspaper I think actually supported Labour was, I think, the Daily Mirror. And unfortunately, not as many people read the Daily Mirror than the Sun. And, and we all know Sun is controlled by Murdoch and... And he's not a big fan of the left, <laughs> I'll tell you that. I think the only Labour leader that the, the Sun have ever supported was Tony Blair. So you can take from that what you will. <laughs> yeah, um, Brexit is going to happen now. Boris Johnson can basically get anything he wants through Parliament. And he has been able to get his Brexit bill through Parliament now. So we can't stop that from happening. So what do we do now? We just... The Labour Party just have to regroup because we cannot afford to lose another election because now this hard right government has got a huge majority it's going to be a tough few years we're not going to see the investment we need in our public services we're not going to see the council houses being built we're not going to see the free broadband roll out the, the free prescriptions that we promised we're not going to see any of these policies that we promised so when in 2024 if we do get into government we're gonna be inheriting an even more bad situation than we could have ever dreamed of if we were inheriting in 2019 so that's a really good argument for being even more radical in 2024 because remember what john mcdonald said in his conference speech i think it was a year ago the bigger the mess you inherit the more radical you have to be so we cannot afford to lose again so we need to regroup, we need to reorganise and we need to start getting our seats back because we lost a lot of voters in the North. I mean, Laura Pidcock lost her seat. You know what, I'm actually surprised that we actually lost Laura Pidcock but then we kept Canterbury and we won Putney. So when, when the exit polls came out at 10 o'clock on the 12th, I thought, okay, Putney is a goner. We're not going to win Canterbury. We're going to lose... Rosie Duffield, I think it is in Canterbury. I didn't think it will be the, the Leave voters in the North that would do us so much damage. I didn't think that was going to happen because I, I'm just surprised that we lost a lot of safe seats in the North and we lost Blair's old seat. Uh, and so, so, so when the exit polls came out, we lost a lot of seats that I wasn't expecting, but we actually kept some seats I wasn't expecting too because like I will never forget where I was in 2017 when I heard that we won Canterbury because I literally thought that we were I was reading the wrong polls literally I thought that like, I was reading the wrong polls when I heard we won in Canterbury and another result that's really shocking to me is Kensington because I think Labour held 
the parliamentary seat in Kensington and then we lost it in this election and that is sad to me because of what's happened in Kensington. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say at the moment about this election. You know, I could go on for hours and hours and hours about my opinions on why we lost but I will, those are the main points I've covered. So I hopefully will be making more regular videos now and so I just want to give you a bit of update. So where have I been? Uh, since I last made a proper YouTube video, I've stood in two council elections. Lost them both, by the way, but I stood in two council elections. And uh, so that's what I've been up to. Uh, and I'm looking for employment. So, but hopefully uh, some more um, videos will be coming out soon. So thank you for watching and have a good day.